right, I'm going to make some soup. This is what's for dinner tonight. I'm going to have some butternut squash soup with potatoes and some leftovers. I have a couple of ends of bread that I'm going to use as a bun. And I have a little tiny piece of vegan meatloaf left that I'm going to cut in half and use as a burger and put cheese on it. And I have a little piece of tomato and a tiny bit of lettuce that's going to go on there. And I'll put some onion on. And this is my <coughs> kasori. It's like an Instapot, but it's way cheaper. So I've been making soup in this, and it's small. I think it's only like a four quart. It's really tiny. It's good for one or two people, and I really like this thing. So I'm just going to start out with two small potatoes and uh, these potatoes are potatoes I bought oh probably a month ago anyway and I have a few left and I need to start using them up so I'm just gonna dice these up I know you can't see what I'm doing but I'm just cutting a potato so uh, I'll put that in there. And then I'm just going to use frozen butternut squash. Oh, hello, my helper. Are you my helper? It's a good thing you're not taller because you'd be a counter surfer. Yes, you would. You would totally be surfing the counter and stealing things. It's a good thing he has short legs. But anyway, there's the potato. And then I have this I have five pounds of butternut squash that I bought a long time ago and I this was from Costco so I want to start using this up because it's started starting to get elderly like me But anyway, I guess it comes in four little packs, so it's not all one packet. And I think one packet will probably do. But that's kind of nice because then you can um, kind of stick it in the freezer easier than one big huge packet like that. So this is still frozen and this is one pound. Well, so there must be five in there. I'm thinking there's five. Okay, and as you can see, it's already starting to get some frost on it. So, I'll be back in a minute. I have to get some broth. Alright, so I have here my seasonings. I have about a teaspoon of onion powder. I have... Um, Mrs. Dash's salt-free chicken seasoning. I have some um, hmm, cumin, about half a teaspoon of cumin. And I have about a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and this is sage, about Oh, a good half a teaspoon of sage. So, oh, and this is uh, parsley. So, but use whatever seasonings you like. Soup has no rules. It's whatever you like. So, okay, I have my potato and my squash in here. And I have, I bought a whole case of these, which I think <coughs> had six in a box at Costco. And I haven't used them all up. I still have two left. And actually, these are best before, <coughs> excuse me, July 30th. Okay, so anyway, back to the soup. <clears throat> it's low-sodium vegetable broth. So um, it's, it's good. I like it. I just haven't used it very often because... Um, 
I don't make much soup in the summer. I'm more towards salads and sandwiches in the summer. So <clears throat> one of these will fit in these little in this little pot. I really like this little pot. It's just the right size for one or two. So I'm going to go ahead and put all this in there. <clears throat> There we go, and it's just to the fill line. And then I'm going to go ahead and add all these spices. Now, as always, I'm going to mix these up a little bit before I add them. And normally, to my soups, I, I like to add turmeric and pepper, but I can't find my turmeric. I need to look for it, so I'll probably add that later. <clears throat> but adding pepper with turmeric makes it more uh, effective. Turmeric is good for all sorts of things. I don't have a list in my head of what they are, but you can go ahead and look that up. And I add that whenever, whenever I make soup or spaghetti sauce or things like that. I add a nice healthy dose of turmeric. So in all that goes, <clears throat> now I haven't put any salt in here yet, so I think I would like, I'd like a little bit of a smoky flavor to this, and I have this uh, smoked Pacific sea salt, and I'm going to add, oh, well, I think I'm going to add some. <clears throat> Hold on, I got to loosen this up. All right, so I'm going to add <clears throat> half a teaspoon of this. And then when it's done cooking, I'm going to taste for salt. But I also want to add some pepper. So a good dash of pepper. And that's all I'm going to put in this soup. And then I'm going to taste it later because I have the feeling it's going to need more salt. But uh, I want to stir it up a little bit because all the spices are floating on the top. <clears throat> so, you know, if you're one or two people and you like to make soup, um, I think I got this little cooker at Walmart, either that or I got it on Amazon, I can't remember, but it wasn't more than, like, it was under $40 when I bought it. <clears throat> I have no idea what it is now. I've had it for a while. And, you know, all the prices are going crazy lately. All right. So, I'm going to put my lid on now. <clears throat> plug this in and this does have a sorry this does have a soup setting so I'm going to lock that and then I don't know if you can see that go a little closer But it's got um, the menu, and it goes through uh, all sorts of things. You can also make yogurt in here. But I'm going to go down to the soup. And there it is. And 25 minutes for the soup. Hit start. Now it's going to take a while to pressurize. But that's all there is to it. Just throw everything in the pot, and there you go. So I'll be back later when I make the rest of my dinner. Okay, dinner time. I'm back. So I finished making my soup, and it's very good. I'll show that to you in a little bit. Sorry about that. <clears throat> anyway, this is dinner. I've got the two crusts of bread, because I don't have any buns. And this is the bread I bought, I don't know, 
couple weeks ago, I guess, or whenever my last haul was. Anyway, I'm going to use that. I still have plenty of uh, Follow Your Heart cheese, and I'm going to use the smoked Gouda. I like the smoked Gouda, and I like their American cheese, too. They're all good, but those two are my favorite. And then I have this little tiny piece of meatloaf that I had frozen, um, and I've eaten a couple meatloaf uh, dinners, and this uh, happens to be barbecue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a burger, because over here I have tomato and lettuce, and I'm going to flatten this out a little bit though, and hopefully it doesn't crumble too much, or I'll have to add something else to it. But let's take a look. And this actually had a little piece of sausage in it. I'll just eat that vegan sausage, of course. So let's see if we can flatten this without it falling apart. Well, it's kind of crumbly. So I think I'm going to add a couple extra things to it just to get it to stick together. And let me see what I can find. I'll be right back. All right, well, this is not going to stay together. It's too crumbly. So I'm going to add some black beans to it. I'm going to mash them up. Not too many. I'll just start off with that. I'm going to mash those up. And I'm even going to add some of these black beans to my squash soup. Because I love beans in soup. And it's extra protein. It's very tasty. So I don't want to mash these up too much, but I want to mash them up enough that they're going to hold together the uh, meatloaf patty. So I'll be back in a few minutes when I get all this mashed up. Okay, well, that seems to have done the trick. I mashed it up. Tastes good. Now this original meatloaf recipe, vegan of course, I got from Chef Jana. And um, if I remember, I'll leave a link to her channel below, but that's the name of her channel. She's a wonderful vegan cook. If you've never, if you're plant-based and, and, and you want to try some of her recipes, they're really delicious. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm going to use here. And I'm going to sort of smash it together. And then I'm going to fry it up and put it on my bun. My bun that isn't a bun. But as you can see, it sticks together nicely now. It has a good flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and fry this up, and then I'll be back when I get it all put together, and I'll show you my burger and my soup. There you go. So I think you could probably even do this with a meat meatloaf if you get tired of eating the meatloaf. But I've already eaten just the plain meatloaf on a sandwich a couple times. And I had it as a meatloaf dinner. So I was getting kind of tired of meatloaf. So this is another way you can, you can use up what you have. No waste at all. All right, friends, I'll be back when I get it plated up. Okay, all done. There's my burger with my 
bread ends, some chips. Here's my squash soup. Stuck some black beans in there. And all I did was after I cooked it, I stuck it in the blender and pureed it. So let's see how it tastes. Mm. Very good. And when the soup is done cooking, add whatever spices makes you happy. Delights your taste buds. So on my burger, I have some Dijon mustard. And I have this Goya mayo ketchup. I think you can find that in the Goya section of your supermarket. So let's give the burger a try. And I'm going to cut this in half because I don't know if I can eat it all. That's a lot of food. And if I can't, I'll eat the rest for lunch so I could stretch it out even further. So here's what it looks like. And I'll give it a little test. I'll be back in a minute. First, I want to take a picture. So I'll be right back. Give this a go. Mmm. Tasty. So use what you have. Save money on food. It's good for the wallet. <clears throat> Buy healthy basic food that you can mix and match and do all sorts of things with. All right, my friends. Enjoy your day. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.